Today, we'll be covering how to implement and train GPT-NEO with just a few lines of code. For those of you who don't know, GPT-NEO is an open source replica of GPT-3. The largest model that's currently available has 2.7 billion parameters, which makes it close to double the size of the largest GPT-2 model that's available. It is also about the same size of the smallest GPT-3 model that's offered through OpenAI through their API that's currently in beta. But I want to note that even the largest GPT-NEO model that's available is still significantly smaller compared to the largest GPT-3 model, which has 175 billion parameters. But even if they did release this model, you would need very expensive hardware to be able to run it. First off, we have to change the run type. So if we head over here, we could do change runtime type. And if you are using a free Google Colab instance, I recommend you use the GPU standard version, and then you'll only be able to run the smallest GPT-NEO model that's currently available. But if you're using a upgraded pro account like mine, then you can use the high RAM uh, version, which will allow you to run a larger model. Now we are going to pip install Happy Transformer with the following command. After it has finished installing, we can import a class called Happy Generation. And from Happy Transformer, import Happy Generation and hit run. Now we'll create an object using our newly imported class. We'll name this object happy gen and this class requires two positional inputs for us to begin using gpt neo the first one is the model type and for this we'll put gpt neo the second one is the model name and for this we'll head over to huggingface.co and we'll type into the search bar gpt neo and here are various models with the tag GPT-NEO. We'll see that there are three main ones. And if you are using a free Google Colab instance, I recommend you use the smallest model to avoid a crash. If you are using a pro instance, then you can use the second largest one or second smallest, depending if you're feeling optimistic or pessimistic. And we can use that one like so. We can press this button right here to copy the name and we can paste it in. Hit install and wait. We can now begin generating text using our happy gen object. We'll save the result into an object called result and we'll call a method called generate text. From here, we only have to provide it with a single input, which is a string. This string could be a phrase or a sentence or an entire paragraph, whatever text input we give it, it will attempt to continue it. Let's give it something interesting. Maybe to solve world hunger, we must invest in, we will print the result. And the result is a generation result data class with a single variable called text. We can print just the text variable like so. And the output is the future of agriculture. We must invest in the future of agriculture. And it just keeps on repeating this sentence. We can now modify the generation algorithm we use. To do so from Happy Transformer, we will import a class called Gen Settings. And we will use this to create an object called args. From here, we can easily modify the default settings. For this, we will increase no repeat n-gram size from zero to two. Going forward, we can copy this text here. And under the args parameter, we can include the args we just instantiated. Hit run, and we'll print the result. 
the future of agriculture. We must also invest more in the future of food and agriculture in general. We must invest more to improve the quality that we produce food. So I would say that is a lot better than what we generated above. We can now change the text generation algorithm we use. We'll head over to happytransformer.com slash text generation slash settings and we'll scroll to the bottom. Here we'll see the settings for different algorithms. By default, an algorithm called greedy is used, which is very simple. It just simply predicts the most likely word to follow this input, just one after another. There are more sophisticated algorithms you could use, which often uh, give better performance, especially if you're looking for creative text. And in this tutorial, we will cover how to implement top K sampling. To do so, just copy this line here. Let's bring it back to our collab. Notice how the max length is only 10. Let's just use the default max length. We don't have to worry about that. Hit run, copy this, change the args to this args. Add a new code block. We'll print the result. The technology to solve hunger itself. What we eat, where we eat, how we eat. That's what we need to do to eradicate hunger. And then it continues. One cool thing about top K sampling is that it is non-deterministic. So each time we run it, it will give a different result. So let's see if this one's better. Our poor, this is a message of the United Nations first ever global hunger report. It is also the basis for the World Food Security Plan launch on 11th December, 2008. We'll give it one more run. Our planet is currently starving. Uh, we have created artificial solutions and we will continue to do so. We must invest in renewable energy and other solutions such as reforestation, solar power, and farming. So I would say this one was the best other than whatever it outputted here. But let's move on to training. Training a GPT Neo model is incredibly simple using Happy Transformer. All we need is a text file that contains nothing but the text we wish to train the model with. Then we drag it into the file structure like so. So now we can access this training data from our Google Colab instance. And from here, we type in happygen.train and then the name of the file, which in this case is train.txt. But before we run it, we will have to downgrade the size of our model from the 1.3 billion parameter model to the 125 million parameter model. Then after it has successfully downloaded, we can fine tune the model and run it how we were before. Happy Gen is now representing a smaller GPT Neo model. If we go back to this cell right here, uh, we can run it without it resulting in a crash. It can uh, import a data class called Gen Train Args, like so. Then we can instantiate a data class like this and modify uh, the various uh, parameters. So for example, uh, here, here's a list of them and you can get a more detailed list by going to this URL right here under the happytransformer.com website. So one common thing we may want to adjust would be the number of training epochs. If we go back here, we can paste that in. And instead of using three, which is the default, maybe we only want to use one. And there we go. We can hit run. And of course, like I said, there are other learning parameters you can modify. When we go back here, we can create a new code block 
And this time, set args equals args, hit run, and there we go. Thanks for watching. There's a link down below to this Google Colab, along with an article published on my website that covers all of the same content, but in written format.